Oh, what's up guys, this is Characters. Um, I don't really know if this is part of the series How to Master 6 Max Zoom or not. I guess it could be, it could not be. It's going to be a Zoom video, it's going to be a live play, but I'm going to do a bit of hand analysis at the start because while I was setting up my tables there for the session, um, play like an orbit, then sit out. As I was doing that, I got a kind of interesting theoretical spot that I wanted to, that in all honesty, I just had no idea what to do. I just didn't know if a hand was part of my turn betting range or not and I wanted to look at it in poker ranger and kind of ascertain whether or not it's suitable enough to be part of a balanced turn betting strategy so I thought we'd take a look at that today before we kick off with some live hands and actually show you guys how we would analyze our own range in a spot to emulate balance in zoom and to decide whether or not we should bet a hand on a street from a balanced objective perspective where we're thinking outside of a vacuum so we're going to do that um, I think I'm pretty much done with the theory of that series. It's, I've covered a lot of different stuff. I think I've covered all the stuff I want to cover. I'm going to make a few live play videos, some hand review videos now that are going to go on to the end of it, I suppose. So I guess we can still call this How to Master 6 Max Zoom. I just don't have the presentation up there on the screen, but it's the same topic because after this, I think I'll move on and do some different videos with students and sort of look at their games and probably move away from Zoom for a while because I've been doing a lot of Zoom content for you guys. So... Yeah, without further ado, let's have a look at the hand in question. So bottom right here we have the replayer up on screen and we get an open from a reg who I think it was this table. I don't know if I have a HUD, I didn't know much about him. He's basically an unknown reg but seems like a reg for all purposes, no notes or anything like that. Um, so he goes ahead and opens the 3x and we 3-bet King Jack off as a bluff in the big blind. Now, our big blind 3-bet range is going to look something like this. So, what we have here is the combos of our range on the flop, but ignore the little numbers here for now. I'll talk about what they mean when we get to post-flop, but just now we'll focus on pre-flop. I just want to explain um, why I've chosen this range to 3-bet. This is a polarized range, and you can see the value range here. Is quite distinct, not the king jack, sorry, that's obviously the bluff, but the jacks, the queens, the kings, the aces, the ace king, and the ace queen suited are value hands because I think I can shove them over four bets against this population and also just get called by enough worse hands that they make good value three bets. Then I have my three bet bluff range. All the stuff in between, by the way, is a call because this is a polar model like we talked about in many series past, so I don't feel like I have to explain that. Um, king jack off is a the only offsuit bluffing hand in my 3-bet range that's chosen because I'm flatting King Jack suited and King Jack off has like the next best blockers of everything available. I'm also flatting these hands here. These are flats too, ace queen, ace jack off, um, king queen off. So there's a blocker hand, it's 12 combos, it goes towards my 3-bit bluff range, I think it's fine. Um, my overall, my other hands are chosen here based on blockers and playability basically. I've got some board coverage options here with my lower um, cards as well. I'm covering basically all kinds of boards in at least some way with overpairs, withdraws, and all kinds of textures. So I think this is a fine, healthy three bet range to have. Big blind versus hijack should make me should allow me to balance it quite well post flop. So then what happens is that villain calls. If he'd folded, it wouldn't be very interesting. The flop comes ten seven five two tone, and my question to myself is: characters, how are you playing your range on this flop? I thought intuitively that king jack should be, especially with the jack of hearts. Um, should be a 3-bet here and a C-bet here and the King of Diamonds that helps as well because Villain's a lot more likely to float me with like King Queen of Diamonds than he is with King Queen of Clubs so actually helps my fold equity to block both the flush draw and the backdoor flush draw here so I'm not totally sure if all combos of King Jack are a C-bet I think they might be um, but let me just tell you what these colours mean purple is C-bet right so I've got 9-8 suited here which is an open end straight draw this is a no-brainer See bet. I'm not going to have a check raise range here, by the way. It's just not going to be a good balance strategy. Um, so without exploitative reads, it would be an exploitative strategy. It's not the best way to divide up my range. It puts a bit too much of a strain on the good hands in my range if I'm check calling some, betting some, and check raising others. So we're just going to check call some and bet some of the good hands here. That's how we're going to play them all. So 9-8 suited is going to be a bet because it has 9 high, but it has 4 8 outs to a straight, and a 9-8 and eight can be good as well. So it's definitely a hand I'm very happy see betting. Um, Jack-9 as well as a gut shot with an over card. I'm happy see betting that. I'm happy see betting in pink here any heart suited combos that are flush draws. And I'm happy see betting my King Jack off as well. Now I might see bet a couple of these backdoor diamond draws as well. I'm not totally sure about that. 
um, but without overcurrents it's not great, but these ones do have back their gut shot, so they're okay, I guess. Um, but anyway, if you count up the combos here of Seabit Bluffs, we have 4 plus 4 is 8, plus um, 12 is 20, and then we've got one each of all the flush draws in our Seabit range, which is 27. Then value hands, I've only got 18. So I'm more weighted towards bluffs on this flop, but at least a lot of my bluffs have very good equity, so I don't think that's such a big problem. But if I want to cut that down, what I can do is I can stop sea betting hands like king of like black king jack off and king jack without a heart, basically. I could stop sea betting those kind of hands, and that would be fine as well, I think. Um, and that would allow my range to be a bit more snugger on the turn. So the orange here is check call, and you can see that I'm betting the more vulnerable pairs here for value queens and jacks, and they, they're going to have similar kind of equity. Like, okay, some opponents will flat queens here, but will also get four bet a ton, um, and I'm going to bet aces and kings half the time. Basically, when I don't have a heart, I'm going to bet them for more protection line, but value, and go for three streets, and when I do, they're pretty good in vulnerable hands to check call with the heart, so I'm going to check call aces and kings with a heart. They do well in heart turns, obviously, as well. I'm going to check call ace king and ace queen because they just have loads of showdown value plus two overs. And I'm going to check call a pair of eight, a pair of sevens, a pair of tens, like ten, eight, eight, seven, and ace five suited when I have that with the, with bottom pair. So I'm going to check all those kind of hands for showdown value. And I'm going to check fold the rest, which is going to be all these suited hands, the three combos of the time that they don't have a flush draw. And I think some of my king jack should fall in there as well. I think I can afford to fold a bit more than I am at the moment. So basically, I don't think we will get to the turn with all 12 combos of King Jack, um, rather we would, there's the King Jack here, we would actually fold, check fold some of it on the flop. Um, so you could even say like, so when I don't have a heart, I check fold the flop with it. So you can tell Poker Ranger to do that. Just click all the non-heart combos there and tell it that you want to check fold those on the flop and then it will give you those half, half your combos and check folded on that flop. Um, so that would be the sort of improved flop strategy. I think that's a little bit better. Um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and bring that one onto the screen instead, because I do think it's better to play that way. Right, so now we get to the turn with a bit of a stronger range, because we don't have all of our King Jack, we just have the ones with a heart in them. And then we need to kind of decide, so this is fine to see about on the flop, the hand in front of me right now, it falls into the, the type of King Jack that are going to be okay to go ahead and, and see bit with. And our balance strategy, then when we get called and the turn comes the two of diamonds, um, well, now we have a lot, a lot of our hands have kind of improved here. We have like overcard plus gut shot plus flush draw hands that are clear bets with loads of equity. Um, we have our flush draws still. We have our open end straight draws still. Um, some of these will even be diamonds, like giant nine of diamonds. It's just improved. Nine eight of diamonds has improved through loads of equity. So all these hands are going to be bets as a bluff. Um, and I think we need to give up some of our, we can't bet our whole range that we bet on the flop. So we're going to need to give up some of our our range here. So I think it makes the most sense to give up some of our King Jack and check fold that. I think that's fine. And then we can check fold, we can check call a turn with like our pocket jacks that are kind of like blocking the hand we're trying to get value from anyway. Much better to value about this turn with queens than it is with jacks because queens gets called by jacks and jacks doesn't get called by jacks or if it does it's one combo and it splits. So I think value betting queens again on the turn, check check calling jacks on the turn as played. Remember we don't have these hands in our range, anything orange here has been checked on the flop. The aces and kings, I think we can continue betting as well, or we could throw in some check calls if we need them. Um, but I'm inclined to think that we should bet most of them, maybe check call a few of them, just to help balance out so we're not folding like a good bet at the time that we check this turn. Um, and go from there. So I think Raw King Jack here, without um, any improved equity, is just a check fold now. And so that's what I did. I think it's a fine way to play the hand because my range is balanced. And as long as your range is balanced, like when I check this turn, I just need to make sure that I'm not making this bet, which is the required equity of this bet is 10 divided by 28, 7, 5. Um, so that's how often Villain would need me to fold to just print money, breaking even like 35%. So as long as I'm calling like two thirds of my turn checking range here, I'm protecting myself against that. So as long as I check call, Oh, I do have, yeah, I don't have these combos as played because they check the flop. So as long as I check call maybe a few of my, check call my jacks at six, check call my, check fold six of my king jack um, is six. So then I need another six check calls on the turn just to make that ratio right. So I would probably then um, look to check call. I guess I'd have to check call my over pairs in that case. 
my six combos of those if I want to have that balanced strategy. So yeah, glad we got rid of those King Jack on the flop. It's kind of uncomfortable um, to have enough showdown value here. It's just not a board that we connect very well. And with our range, as you can see, we have a lot of like air here, a lot of draws, but not that many good made hands because we don't play that much like good 10x or anything in this situation. So on the turn, yeah, as long as I'm check calling some kings and aces, I'm going to be pretty close to balanced here. Um, probably still betting my queens because they're just like good hands to bet. They're a bit vulnerable and they can get paid off by jacks or nines or whatever. So I think that's how I play my range in that spot. That's how I think about it. That's how I approach the situation. It's always good to do range analysis. It's going to come in pretty handy. So we'll go ahead and clear that for now. Bring the replayer up again if we need to and we'll just play some poker. And the more of this you do, guys, like the better feel you'll have for it and the more you'll feel comfortable in game just knowing what part of your range you're, you're in. It'll take a while. It takes a lot of work, honestly, but it's worth it. When you get up to like 100 no limit and you start like frequenting that pool and you come across decent players you do have to have balanced ranges and it's good peace of mind as well just to know that you're playing in a good balanced way i'm going to just go ahead and make a value three bet against an unknown fish that opens here on table two get called um normally on this board i would just bet fold because i'm typically doing a lot better against a calling range than i am a a betting range from the average fish so i think i'm just going to go ahead and bet here normally bet fold because we do just have one pair and the board is pretty scary, but I mean, it can be a mistake against some types of fish, but I don't like check calling there. I would check call there against a wreck who's going to bet like he's queen and king queen at me and all that kind of stuff, but oh, he called me a fish. That's nice. It's the same guy, right? Yeah. Um, But yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it against the fish because I expect his range just to be, I, I expect to be in better shape against it when I'm betting them and he's betting, which is a good common rule for a more passive fish. And if you don't know what variety of fish someone is, you should normally just assume that they're of the passive variety until you get a better idea. Okay, so here we just open and get flatted by what seems to be a weaker player. I'm going to just see bet once on the Ace-10-10 board. I'll get some fold equity from low cards here. It's not ideal. It's kind of close to give up. I think a half pot see bet should yield enough fold equity to be all right. And I'm just going to give up now because I have very little fold equity on that turn once called by a fish on the flop. So there I'm not going to worry about my range. I'm just going to play exploitatively in a vacuum because I'm against a weaker player. So not really much else to say there. I'm going to flat the 2.5x open against the rig. Flops a check call, turns a check call or check full defend depending on the card. And that, oh, I could have actually led there because my range improved so much. I'm actually just going to check call this river and let him bluff here. There's not so many. I can't have much air in my range. So I don't really expect to get like call by too many worse hands if I bet. And it's nice to have some slightly stronger hands in my um, range there. I mean, ace I can't really expect to call a bet on that river it anyway, so... I think it's fine to just go for the check call there. This guy's fairly tight, so I'm just going to downsize my small blind open to take advantage of that and get myself a better required fold equity on my steal. Um, get three bet by, and it's the first time he's done it. He's made a three bet, so that hand is just a fold, even in a balance strategy. So it's certainly a fold when we're overfolding our range against someone who seems tight. I won't overfold it drastically there because it's early days, but I will overfold my range a bit. I go ahead and check call Ace Queen on this board. Like it does have pretty decent showdown value, um, and yeah, I don't really see the need to to bet with it. I don't want to get my C bet range to get completely um, out of whack there, and I'm just gonna keep continue check folding actually in this turn card with this part of my range and continue taking a showdown value line. And I'm gonna check evaluate this river card, and villain made two pair. It's okay. That's fine. Um, if you're a villain, you might consider betting that turn for like value and protection. I don't hate his check back, it's okay. Um, but yeah, threes here, we open, get called. We do have the backdoor flush draw. It's not a, it's not a great board for us. Um, kind of close with the three high backdoor flush draw. You haven't got jacks, have you? Um, I think we'll just check. Like if someone's that interested in the hand that they want to talk about it, like I usually just like wouldn't see bet bluff quite as much if he's like concerned or if he's actually weren't wondering about it or queen 10 that'd be a nightmare yeah we're gonna go ahead and bet now because we're just gonna turn our we're gonna turn our threes into a bluff because it's pretty far down our range if he's like chatting here and he snap calls that king i doubt i have too much fold equity here so we'll probably just check and lose that's fine um he could even have like ace of hearts x and oh wow he just played a set insanely passively that's fine too, but I decided to turn my hand into a bluff on that turn card because it is just getting really low down in my range, and it's definitely a turn that the fish can fold pretty often. Like flop's kind of close, but like against a fish, I think checking threes is fine. Just hope to turn a flush and get the showdown that way, or get the showdown with my pair. Both runouts give me some kind of showdown value, which is fine. 
Um, this guy seems to be like a reg, and regs tend to. I just don't respect this line at all. Honestly, I just feel like it's so easy to play against. Like they generally don't have a limp raise range. Some of them might, but like limp folding the small line as a reg, it's just really weird. Um, ace queen. Eight is a. This is a board I will have a checking range on actually. Um, I think I'm gonna bet though because I do have like a better flush draw here. This part of my range, I'll check back some queen x and some um weaker hands here. But I think when I have like two suited cards with the backdoor draw, my range is so bad otherwise that I can I can probably see that most of my backdoor draws, especially the eight high ones that have like like zill showdown value. So that's probably okay. Um, queen six will just fold a bit fish in a small blind. So yeah, this hammer these queen, I mean, I just have showdown value. I don't want to get into the situation where I'm just c-betting ridiculously wide line versus blind out of position. It's not going to be great for me. I'll check call one, probably check full turns and stuff. It's a good hand to check call one with because a queen or an ace turn actually makes me quite happy. I don't even mind jack or ten turns too much either. They give me gut shots. Um, and a size often good at showdown. And it's just like a way of protecting my range. Like if I'm a way of balancing my range because if I'm only check calling the flop with like king x or eight x there, then I'm going to end up just like calling the turn every time I call the flop, which is also unbalanced. So I want to check call some some hands I can just fold on the turn as well, but I find check calls on the flop. And the hands that progress quite well throughout the hand, like ace-queen, that turn okay there, are much better than like pocket fours and stuff like that. So uh, we can fold there, despite our backdoor draws being three-way. So yeah, major emphasis on balance in my game these days. I'm just, like I've got the exploitative stuff down generally. Like I feel like, if there's something I need to work on right now, it's just learning my strategies for all these different spots. Um, H-Tech suited is usually just too good not to 3-bet for value here. I'd be inclined to shove this over a 4-bet as well because you just get people who over 4-bet bluff in these games. Um, definitely like a fine, I think, 3-bet jam. It's one of the hands that has better equity to jam against a button 4-bet range that calls off anyway, like it does okay against something like 10s plus ace queen suited plus or something or whatever they want a four bet call off with it has like blockers to the hands that kind of dominate it like jacks and stuff like that there and yeah it's okay it's got two over cards to tens it's not a bad hand to three bet shove with and this suitedness gives it a bit of extra equity and it's not like we expect to be ahead when we three bet shove jacks it's a, it's a semi bluff you know we expect to have some equity with the hand um and be able to get enough fold equity to make that good. We'll just fold here, just assuming like pot size leads through way on that board are pretty strong and we want to overfold our range and the burden of defense is split between us and the other player anyway. I mean, I'm gonna open this queen six, it's early days, the guy looks like an aggro fish so far, but I like opening suited queens, blind versus blind against fish. It's generally good as long as they're not three betting too wide and we don't have a big enough sample to conclude that that guy's three betting really wide there. So we can go ahead and open that hand. Just go ahead and resize this replayer so it's the right size. So let me know what you guys want to see. I mean, Grand School has been a little dead recently, which is kind of sad. So hopefully we can get a bit more activity going in the forums. Like, let me know what what content you would like to see from me next. Um, Ace five here, Ace six suited rather. I'm gonna go ahead and ISO. Like, yeah, my position is not great, but I have a lot of flop strength, like frequent strength with this hand and fold equity with just one fish being in the pot. And um, this is a clear set mine against a, a loose passive looking fish and queen seven suited is at the bottom of my calling range. So I'm gonna flat that blind versus blind. And I can fold on jack six three with no prospects at all. Make sure you don't fold this flop very much, but you can fold the absolute worst stuff, basically. Um, yeah, now we can fold. We're not really getting enough of a price for to mine our two outs on the turn there. It's just not really gonna happen. Um, yeah, I mean, villain is like some passive fish Probably I'll just open a bit wider against him because I expect to have a lot more of an edge. I expect him to make more mistakes post flop, so I'll just build it up, take it down. Seems reasonable to me. King seven's a fold, small blind versus button, because otherwise, because I'm three betting linear there, and if I three bet king seven suited in a linear range, I'm three betting way too much stuff. I'm folding to a four bet, so it's very unbalanced. We don't want that. And this hand, this guy's three bet, one out two. I think I'm going to min raise because there's a short stack here and a small blind as well rather than go ahead and 3x, they've already fast folded, it's good when you see fish like already fast fold their blind, it's awesome, it's pretty horrible. I mean I guess you can get some hands that you're folding no matter what, but it's not something I like to click, the auto check fold, big blind box. i um, gonna steal against this guy, he's not done anything over four hands, I'm just gonna make it a bit smaller due to stack sizes, he's less likely to flat me with this stack, 
There we go, get flatted. And I'm gonna go ahead and just C bet here. Make it nice and small. I don't need too much fold equity with this bet. Turn a gut shot, but I don't think it's satisfactory equity to go ahead and barrel bluff the turn against such a player. Um, we're gonna get peeled a lot and his range does improve a bit on that deuce river as well, so we're not gonna bluff there either. King got suited against a 15-12, RFI under the gun 11. I am going to 3-bit bluff this hand because my hand is just super good. It's not quite good enough to flat with, it's at the very top of my folding range, so it's definitely going to be a 3-bit bluff, even against someone tight, like it doesn't mean I have no fold equity here. I'm going to check back flop though just exploitatively because, um, yeah, I mean I think that I have a hand that's not going to get many streets of value, it is good quite often, but I don't ever want to get a raise here, I don't really want to build a huge pot with it, it's just a one or two street of value hand, so I'm not going to play it like super fast. Check calling my middle pair and now check calling turn with my added equity. I'm going to check call queen nine five with ace king with a heart as well. And I'm just going to make a smallish uh, turn bet here for value and possibly river as well. And now that we have showdown value still, I don't see a reason to turn that into a bluff. So I'll check again and I'll check call um, the flop here as planned. Turn a bit of equity here, like our check call range shouldn't have much air in it to be honest, but that is a card that improves villain's range a lot as well. I don't think it's horrible to, he has a better five, fair enough, I don't think it's horrible to actually turn this into a check raise bluff now against the average aggro kind of reg. This guy doesn't seem crazy so far. It seems to be a reg of some sort though, hidden from search with fairly reggy stats. Um, and now I'm contemplating turning my hand into a bluff here. What can I make fold? Like Jack, something that hit a Jack on the turn. Certainly, I'm quite low down in my flop check call range, so I think I should just bet on my 9x I check call flop with just got there as well. So I think it's now a bluff. Like it was a showdown value check call, but when the board deteriorates that much for me, um, I think I'm losing to hands that would fold to a bet at showdown, and I'm at the very kind of bottom part of my range, so it's definitely going to be become a bluff. It's a big mistake actually not to bluff the river with that hand there. <coughs> So guys, still doing coaching. If anyone's looking for a No Limit Hold'em coach, you can hit me up at admin at caracorner.com. Kind of split my time up between finishing the final stages of the book that you're probably sick of hearing about, like when the hell is this thing coming out, characters, stop messing us about, man. Gonna steal wider here because 1715 is kind of ridiculous. There's only 100 hands, so you may not be that tight. But it's fine. Um, And, whoa. I wanted to make that four, not 450, but that's okay. I tend to have a slightly bluff heavy um, polarized 3-bit range against under the gun because I feel people do fold quite a bit of their range there out of position. I don't see about this flop very often but it's just a really good board I think to go ahead and see bet here. Like the fish is going to fold here a bunch, the reg should fold, fold here a bunch as well. Um, I just hit it a lot and it's not that I have like loads of air here or anything so I think this see bet should just print money to be honest. And now I, flop a gut, now I turn a gut shot, like I don't really have queen jack here. This is one of the better hands believe it or not in my range. And villain has a lot of like jacks, queens, that kind of thing. So I'm actually going to go ahead and bet again and double barrel this turn. And we can fold queen seven there. He could have like ace king, I suppose, could be in his range, but like I just think it's pretty strong when we bet flop and turn three way. And we need a bluffing range there, and ace jack blocks ace king, which is nice. So I think it's a good hand to use for that purpose. Yeah, it'll work sometimes, sometimes it won't. It's not like I'm printing money like. Big mistake is to think in terms of, oh wow, characters always knows when to bluff the turn, like you got a fold, like no way, like often I won't, I'm just picking, like I don't know how often my opponent's folding the turn, I don't know that he folds queens or jacks there, I hope he does, but I'm just picking a hand that is a clear bet anyway in a balanced strategy, in my opinion. And if he wants to call, fine, if he wants to fold, that's fine too, whatever. I don't mean that from like a sulky point of view, like I don't care what he does, I'm just playing my game. I mean it from the point of view that it really doesn't matter strategically because I'm playing a balanced strategy. Um, big blind here, go ahead, we've got polar range here, so we'll go ahead and make it 350. I tend to go a little bit smaller when I'm polar because I'm going, I'm bluffing more and a bit bigger when I'm linear. And this is a board that, how do I play my range on this board? I'll check back that hand for a start because king high, no draw is a pretty bad hand to see about bluff here on a board that I do want to check in range. Um, I'm just full to turn. 
and we can fold there. Um, how do I play my range of this flop? I don't think I want to range back because I'm out of position and I can get full to the pun. So I think I want to check in range. So I think queens is a pretty good hand to check call with. It's pretty invulnerable. It's like a very stable showdown value. It blocks king queen, which is a hand that can value bet. It's a very good check call, I think. You bet it's like a really small sizing here. Don't really know what that means. I'm definitely calling at least two here with queens because I'm quite high up in my range for check calling flop. And he like pots the turn. Kind of weird, like it's like he's polarizing his range and repping only flushes. I kind of don't think I want to fold that. I think it's much more likely to be over bluffing than anything else when he takes like huge bet sizing on the turn. He just shouldn't be playing. Oh, I does have a right, he flats three bets with eight five suited, noted. But okay, so he does have a value hand there, but in general I think his range could be a bit more polarized, a bit more bluff heavy, um, when he plays his hand that way. So river card kind of aided us there. So flat 3-bet button versus big blind with 8-5 suited. So now that I know he's flatting like his whole opening range to a 3-bet, it's very, very easy to crush him and just play a value-orientated game. It's just horrible. A horrible, horrible call. Pre-flop, honestly, because... Um, well, I think it's horrible. Like, I don't think it can be plus EV, and I think it's just... If he's flatting that, then, you know, I'm just killing him with my 3-bet range. I'll just switch to a linear strategy now. When I see him again, he probably won't remember but I now know he plays that way and I'll exploit him for the rest of eternity that he continues to play that way so it's very important that kind of illustrates why it's important not to be too um, unbalanced basically um, sevens here is a pretty damn small three bet I think we can call it's too far up in our range and implied odds are very nice here I'm not going to develop a donkey range on this board this guy could actually be a fish I think I'm going to check raise here I think it oh he's a reg but I think it still nevertheless makes some sense to have a check raise range on this flop especially being a bit deeper if I make it 18, there'll be 36 in there. I can't exactly jam. I'm going to make a small kind of... Um, yeah, a small kind of check raise on this flop. I'm just going to check fault fives there against a tight-looking guy. I mean, the hand just plays like shit on future streets, so... It's fine to have bluffs there as well, like a like queen jack or whatever, or like some kind of straight draw, flush draw, back there, flush draw. I can add some bluffs to my range there, because I have jacked in suited, probably, and I have all my sets as well, so I have a substantial value range on that flop. I'm close to having range advantage, actually. Probably do have range advantage there. I have such a higher concentration of pocket pairs than, he, than middle pairs, and he has, like, I can have all those sets, and he probably doesn't, because he doesn't three-bet them. So my range is honestly just doing really well there. So having a raising range makes a lot of sense in general. And I can make that small raise and then kind of bet turn half pot and shove river. I think that works just about with those stack sizes. Can I just... Mm, I'm going to fold this here on the hijack. There's too many 3-betty regs ahead and it's a hand that I always have to fold the 3-bet. So it doesn't make a very good stealing hand at all in the hijack. Because it is a kind of stealing. It's like a semi-steal hand. It doesn't really... Like, it doesn't hold its own if it's constantly getting 3-bet or called. It only works if I have fold equity pre-flop or a terrible fish that I can, like, mine against and I don't have either, so... <clears throat> Tag that guy due to stack size. East is suited is normally not an open under the gun. I mean, it depends. I've just got a lot of tight players. They do have kind of highish um, three bit stats so far, though. So I want to be somewhat careful there. Just going to check call this flop because I will give up a ton on this flop. I need some hands. So I'm happy check calling against this stabber in particular because this guy could have licensed to stab fairly wide here. Like the small blinds range doesn't hit this amazingly. And when I check, I'm giving up a lot. So I expect people to stab here fairly often and so ragged ace that can't value bet is definitely going to be or can't value bet much is definitely going to be a check call on this texture just thinking about your range and how you're dividing it up have a check in range on this board and that actually means my sizing is going to be a bit bigger for when i see that because i'm a bit more polarized and that's fine if i was range betting everything just for fold equity and picking up the pot and protection i would be a bit smaller and this is just a call, can't be too thrilled about life, but definitely can call. And I want some hands in my turn barrel range that are not like, that are not flush draws as well, just so I can rep flushes when I don't actually have them. So having an 8 out draw is just going to be a bet, and it's going to be a bet fold against the race from a tight looking player. I saw this fish here, um, get a pretty bad board, so we're just going to check here and try to head towards showdown. We'll fold now if he bets in that turn, because it's just a horrendous turn card. Uh, we can call 50. We can set mine and sometimes have the best hand, and we can do it again. And win. You can always call when you're getting like 11 to 1 if you've got any showdown value at all. So turn checks through. 
Um, I think it's probably too thin to bet River for value, honestly. I mean, like, what could I possibly be bluffing with that I check all the flop with? Um, I think it's way too thin. So I'm just going to check and evaluate what to do here. I think, like, sometimes this fish here, I mean, this is, probably is a fish from the, yeah, maybe I should have bet small just for value from, like, 10x or, like, jacks or something because, like, the fish will... I'm kind of concerned, though. Like, I think the blocker bet's good because I don't lose much money. See, now when he bets again, I feel like after I'm going to fold here. I'm going to hold... Um, what is that? Hold command shift. I don't remember one of them. Wow. So he's just bluffing. Yeah. Weird. Didn't expect to be see two bluff heavier range there, but the other reg has a better race than us. So that's all good, I suppose. Um. Yeah. So like, I think the blocker bet's good because it stops us ever having to check fold the best hand, um, or at least it makes that less likely. And we can get paid off by random weird feeler bet stuff that the fish just bet for the hell of it on the flop, like second pair. I'll find out where I'm at or whatever that kind of thing. But you will have better race X there a ton as well. This is why check calling a big bet or making a big bet are both kind of bad options. So I like the feeler, the blocking bet on the river there. That's what I should have done. It worked out. It saved me money in that instance, but it doesn't make it right to check fold. A uh, vulnerable hand here that we want to bet for value and protection. So we'll just start betting. And this uh, queen 10 suited could be in his range. I think this is the fish, silver star, chrome star rather. Playing one table, so we'll just size up nice and big on this turn. It's a good turn in that he probably won't fold too much of his flop range on it. We make the immortal nuts in the river. Um, he can have some draws, not that many. He can have a lot of like jack 10 stuff with the case jack, like 9x 10s, this kind of thing. You have some missed draws, but we don't know he lost river with them, so it's a mistake to check and target those. I think I should just make a value bet size that just gets called by. Um, the made hand part of his range that he makes it to the river with basically if he has a lesser boat he'll shove anyway so we can stack that I might check race that river sometimes against some guys because I do block like a lot of stuff I'm trying to get paid off with like against a reg I might check race river there and let them bet miss draws or value bet thinly but fish don't value bet thinly we don't know that fish even bets miss draws so I think just going for straight value from a stationary range of like tens and stuff like that is better than it's going to be to actually check that river Threes doesn't really deserve comment, pretty standard. <clears throat> so yeah, I think these games are pretty soft, honestly. Like, I know it's Stars, it's 2016, people are like, oh yeah, Stars is tough. I just feel like it's not that tough. I don't remember this guy, but this is definitely just a 3-bet, regardless of a polar bluffing range here. I pulled the 3-bet range here, A7 is not quite good enough to flat, so it's just going to be a 3-bet. And um, this is a 4-bet, and this is a 3-bet, and then not fold. Made that a little big, but I think that's fine. Not fold or four bet there with ace queen. I can flat that in position. I can maybe even rip it. I don't really love ripping it because the hand doesn't have that much equity. I like just flatting in position there. I will have a flat four bet range when I'm in position because I want a three bet like king queen suited there and stuff as well, or whatever that will flat the four bet with. So I will have a range of mostly like broadways and suited broadways when I flat four bets there, which is fine. I think it's a bit defined, but I don't think it's necessarily a problem. Cannabis op um, fish. 10's probably good for a 3-bet, get it in here, probably like got slightly more than plus 50% equity against his range for getting it in, short stacks don't tend to be too nitty facing 3-bet, so I'm going to assume that we're okay just doing that. Flop's an easy check, fold I think, again on this kind of texture, like it's just one of the worst textures for us, our equity jumps down quite considerably against an under the gun opening range that flats a 3-bet here, so I don't think we need to do much here except for just give up. And this one is going to be a... 1.25, 2.5x, like if the fish was in the blinds, I'd 3x. 6 high, I have some backdoor draws here with the spade, so I'm going to go ahead and actually see bet. I'm going to continue check folding here probably. Like he can check back a lot of stuff to slow play. I win here against like 9s or 7s sometimes, but not very often. Could have nothing at all that I beat, so we'll just fold, stick with our plan. Um, jack turn, but if we if we do want to bet the jack turn a lot, but I just have such a terrible hand. Like the mar the C bet was very marginal on the flop to begin with, to be honest. Might have been a check fold, it's just because I have the back door straight and back door open ender. I elected to go for it, and I'm not going to rekindle this as a bluff, I'd rather use a hand with less showdown value. Not that I think it's going to win like ever, but just as a matter of good practice and range balancing. Queen Jack off, um, openable with tight players ahead, that's fine. Not openable when people are more aggro 3-bet at the table. 
flatted by a button who we don't know much about. This is a texture on which like he's a fish, I think, playing one table. Not everyone at one table zoom is a fish, but most people are. This is a board where I just don't have a lot of fold equity because A6 is gonna call me one street and pocket pairs are gonna call a raise, so it's just gonna be a pretty easy give up. And aces has no reason to there's a fish in the button here, but again, I don't have position on him, so my range just wants to go 2.5x here, not 3. Um, 3 is the fold against a cutoff open from a reg very comfortably. And um, we'll 4-bet if we get 3-bet by this guy. So he seems like a kind of reg fish, like too tight and not full stacked, so easy call with jack 6 suited. And easy, probably 3x with a non 3 better or not an active 3 better so far, and a big blind and a fish in a small line. I think you want a 3x there. Um, this is kind of close. I think I'm just going to bet because I just have so much equity against everything and I kind of want to protect against the times that he has like two over cards and binks one that's not a flush card for me on the turn. That's not going to happen often, but I think just betting with all that equity is great. It is not really... I mean, it, from range construction, it makes a lot of sense to check that hand back so I can have flush draws if I was concerned with balance. But villain just looks really straightforward and passive and stuff, so I think I'll just like do what I think is best in the vacuum there, actually. Um... I'm gonna call here, like, you can 3-bet against fish here, but when they're shorter stacked, I kinda of prefer just, like, banking top pair and then getting some money into the pot, and I'm gonna just 3-bet here, I see bet here. Half pot, and uh, these 10, I will, I'll open it, because I've got fish at the table. I'm not in position, but it's marginal. This is an okay open, as long as you're not getting 3-bet a lot. It's a fine open, 6 max. Bam! That is a pretty good river. Um, so villain's calling range here, what it could be like 10x, like 10, 9, 10, 8, pocket 8s or something. I'm just gonna bet like 4 is the size that we get called pretty often. Fish can't fold to bet check bet lines, they just hate to fold to that line. Ace 10 here, we get called by a fish, that's our dream, so we'll just see about 2 bucks and go from there, try and get stacks in by the river. I'm gonna lead here and lead river as well, he's got a lot of ace high and stuff like that in his range, and yeah, I have a lot of pocket bears, I have a flush draw, this doesn't make sense not to lead this hand. He goes for a raise on the flop. Um, I think we'll just call in position and leave his range as wide as we can. Obviously, we're not folding. Top two here, he can have worse value hands. He can be raising to like find out where he's at or whatever. He's going to find out when we show him he's 10 at showdown, that's for sure. Um, and if I call here, we will leave a pot size bet left over for the river. So I'll just let him continue like sort of spewing around in case he is bluffing here. I know nothing about the guy. It's very possible he's got like King Jack or something. And I want him to like bluff all in the river with those hands. I don't want to like give him a reason to fold. So. Three bet here just for isolation and kind of like okay this guy's maybe a fish with the stack size I don't know um I'm gonna just shove the river here I think this is quite atypical of a kind of ace jack kind of hand ace queen kind of hand something like that um worst two pair he could have a three but it's kind of unlikely I think it's just about good enough to shove for value we will have a set sometimes <clears throat> so yeah I think it's a mistake to three bet that flop or even raise the turn because you just you have no idea what villain's range is. You do not want to shut down those bluffs. That's where a lot of value comes from. It's just stupid fish spewing at you there. So you don't. You want to be careful there. Big mistake to raise flop. I see it all the time. It's horrible. The thing is with those stack sizes, you will stack like the ace x portion of his range on most runouts anyway, as you just saw there. So you don't want to blow out those air hands for no reason. Um, easy check call against the c bet sizing and easy check call on the turn as well. Like when we call that sizing on the flop. We're calling a lot of our range because we have to to that size to, to defend in a balanced manner. Queen Jack against a cutoff open is probably just a fold Queen Jack off, but it is close. Um, yeah, so because we got to the turn with such a wide range, I feel definitely compelled to call sevens here. And we can check fold this river and call our Jack X and stuff with diamond blockers and things. This is fine to fold on the river, but definitely not on the turn. Unless we know villain is over bluffing, which doesn't appear to be the case from the sample we've got, so that's fine. Um, nines under the gun against big blind. I'll just check back this board. It is a board I don't love with my range. I do want to check it back like a reasonable amount of the time. We'll call one, although it's kind of marginal. We can do the same with like aces, kings, and stuff here. And we'll fold river and call with the better stuff in our range just to stay balanced. That's fine. Um, bit of a unbalanced strategy here under the gun against button because again like I say I think people fold a fair bit to three bits in this spot so my polar range does favor bluff slightly it's a little bit unbalanced I'll let you guys into that secret 17 14s typically don't defend that much to three bits either I mean okay it's only 71 hands but it seems on the tighter side so far remains to be seen if that's accurate though 
he calls, we bring top pair, we want to check back here, we need a check and range here, we have loads of hands that want to check, like kings and stuff and queens and ace extra strengthens that a little bit. His range here should actually be really quite strong, it should be quite snug. Um, like when he leads here, I expect to see like ace king, ace queen, um, queens, jacks, tens, king, queen shouldn't lead. I don't really see any bluffs at all, apart from like nines or eights or tens maybe, that you could turn into a bluff. It's kind of crazy to fold like top pair here, but his range I do think is pretty strong. I'm actually going to fold. I just think on that queen turn, when he's under the gun and he's flat at the three bit out position, his range is all over that, honestly. Um, I would bluff cat safer turns than that where king queen can be like in his range, but I don't think he bets king queen normally on a turn where he makes showdown value. It just doesn't make sense. So I think we can just like not bluff catch there exploitatively. I just don't think we're going to get punished for that. I think that's fine. I don't think people are betting like 8s or 10s enough on that turn card for me to worry about it. There aren't, isn't really any air in his range, he can't really have nothing there, it's not possible, so as long as he's not turning loads of the lower pairs in his range into a bluff, which I don't think he is, we can fold top pair there. I think it's a very good exploitative fold actually that I'm fairly proud of. Um, just going to range bet this flop, because it's very difficult for Villain to do much here. And this one as well, these are both range bets in this spot. And here against the Fish Razor, um, I think we'll start by checking. He calls turn. Um, we are pretty low down in our range. I'm going to bet check bet this hand on the river, especially the ace river because my showdown value is just really low. When he bets, though, I find it hard for him to have too much air. Um, we can fold the bottom of our range there. Don't really want a raising range there because we're like totally capped. Maybe there's some two pair we could raise, but not much. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and raise here. Like For one, I build the pot against the fish when I actually get there. And for two, like he can just have air and BC betting and I have five high and I'm out of position. So this is my most direct route to just winning the pot. I'm not gonna bluff the turn though, because when a fish calls you on this texture, they're not folding turn very often. So I'm gonna hope that he bets tiny again on the turn and I can just peel the river for very cheap and realize my implied odds. That's my best route here. Um, that is not great. Like it is a paired board now as well. I don't fear set so much here. Like ace jack and like top air and stuff is way more likely. Um, my equity is pretty low. Implied odds are, yeah, I'm out of position. I have to like donk river stupidly when I make a flush. And I don't even know if a fish pays that off. It's pretty obvious even to a fish. So I think just check forward the turn. My draw is really quite bad there, especially on a paired board. So I'm fine with that. And I think this is just a fold. I don't think my price. It's not a million miles away, actually. I'm getting pretty good pot odds here with these deuce. It's not a hand that flops that great, though. I'm a bit deeper with one of them. This might be okay to call. I don't know. It's kind of close. It being a wheel, a wheel ace is much better for me. I'm just going to take this as a check from the fish. If this is a fish as well, I, I want to get involved in more hands, so I think my call pre is fine. And check to the preflop razor as I would normally expect him to be taking it as a check. So basically what's happened here is the flop's checked through. And I need to decide what I want to do on the turn. I don't think he has like ace, queen, ace, king very often. I think I have the best hand quite a bit here. King, jack improves, tens improves. I think he has like kings and stuff quite a lot. I think, do I want to get value from the fish right now? Yeah, I'm going to bet like half pot. It's not that I've got like loads of value in this spot, but I do expect to have a better hand than the reg most of the time when the reg doesn't bet the flop, doesn't raise that ridiculously small donk. And I think I can get called by like king, queen, queen, jack, jack, ten, king, ten, king, ten kind of hands from the fish. So a little bit thin, but it's for protection and value. I think it's a fine turn bet. Get cold four bet here. I'll shove over this like with some of my range, not with king, queen off because it just doesn't do well. When we make two pair, that definitely makes the river value bettable. Um, there is some asex you can call with here, but I want him to call with like a queen as well, so I don't actually want to bet too big here. I bet like half pot again. I think this is a decent size. I think if I bet like huge there, I might actually just not be doing great when called, even though that's a fish just because of the texture. I think I run into like the king jacks and the ace queens and stuff more if I bet big there. I want him to call me not just with like a good ace and better, but with like second pair and stuff as well, because that's a lot of his range. I don't think even a fish cold call like too many ragged aces to three bets, so I don't expect him to have lots of top pair worst kicker, which is why I don't target that. I target like second pair and go kind of smaller with my two pair. Like, the two ever helps me, it makes me beat all this one pair, but it doesn't make my hand capable of like shoving for value there. I bet this flop for two thirds because we do have a substantial checking range in that texture. And we're just going to bet nice and big polarized or polarize our range now because it is very polarized our turn betting range here. So let's make a nice big bet. Eight sevens are at the bottom of our defending range. We're going to open this ace seven just because the cutoff and button at this table seem really straightforward. 
think I've been going for quite a while here actually, I've kind of lost myself in the, the fun of playing the session, which is good, I'm starting to enjoy my poker again. Um, not that I didn't enjoy it before, but I'm just, I guess because my game's got a lot better recently, I'm just finding like a, a kind of passion for it. And I know that I'm reaching the end of my book as well. I know that as soon as that's done, I'm going to be able to start grinding again and feel like a poker player again. It's important that when you're a poker player, that you feel like one, not just like a drone that churns out a book that takes forever. So yeah, that's kind of cool. And this is an easy check because we don't get value from a ton of worse. We want to control the pot. We want to bluff cats. We want to get our value later if we are going to bet for value. And again, that queen makes it unlikely that we get called by worse pocket pairs. So I think we'll check here and just bet once in the river. Not a million miles away from betting turn though. 150. I think it's a call, but I'm not thrilled about it. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I should be fairly happy there. It's like a random fish. I don't think I should be too big grudge calling there very much. Um, not to be results orientated, but yeah, I mean, random fish. You just never know how much air is in there. River leading range there. 9-8 um, is down there in my range showdown value-wise. I think it makes sense to bet turn bet river with this exploitatively against what appears to be a weaker player. When he takes this line, I'm just going to assume he's slow playing the flop or something and fold. He tends a call there. And we'll, can we check raise this board? Probably not. And we'll just bet twice here for value. Probably don't want to check raising range on that flop. Like we have ace 10. We have, do we have 10s? Probably not. No, don't have aces. So just not got enough hands there to really check raise. So we'll just check all the flop. Which doesn't actually cost you that much value. Like it's fine. If he has a good hand, it's going to pay you off if you raise and barrel off. He's going to bet three streets anyway and you can raise later. So, there are other ways to get value than just going straight brute force for it on the flop if that harms your range. Threes is just about callable to this size. And the big blind closing action wouldn't be from the small blind though. And very foldable on that flop. No set, no bet as they say. Ace King, like a three X with the fish and the blinds, pretty standard. It's very formulaic, like the Zoom game. Like you, you're doing the same things all the time. You're making the same adjustments for the same reasons very often. Not a good board to see bet. Got showdown value. Like a lot of turn cards. Want to keep checking. Well, bluff catch this river. Not happily, but I will. Especially for that price. Like you only need to be good twenty five percent. Like you have to call with a sign a double pair board against a random fish. You just have to. Folding's horrendous. Uh, okay, easy C bet here. I could bet my pretty much everything against this fish. Avoid the fish flop fallacy that is like fish hit low boards all the time. They really don't. They have a lot more high cards than low cards in their range. Um, I just want to be careful against fish with barreling. Just don't get out of hand with it. That should have been not a fold, I don't think. I can't remember what I had now, but I had a feeling like I shouldn't have folded it by the time down on table two, so never mind. I'm just going to keep my ranges in check here, and I like to, to check back. I think, like again, like I wouldn't bluff that river. I'd underbluff that river, because fish tend to call versus that line very often. I'm going to call this flop with like king highs and stuff. It's so dry that I just need to be calling the sea bit size with, with king high. Like It's just good enough. I need to be defending enough my range on this flop. Villain looks super passive. Um, he can have a six here, it's possible, but I believe I'm too far up in my range to want to actually turn it into a bluff. I think I should just go to showdown and we can chop with the other king high, that's fine. Yeah, just definitely call that flop, because like if you don't call a flop that dry to a half pot C bet, your opponent is printing more money than they need to. Like they are gonna profit by C betting half pot there, like I've said before, but you can limit how much they profit there. You can see bet the open end straight draw here. And King 7 is a call against the sizing. You can fold this flop. I mean, I've got absolutely no equity here, so that's fine. King high as well. I can just check back. I don't want it, like my bluffing range to get too out of line here. I'm just going to take it to, to showdown and try and win. I bluff my weaker hands. I have plenty of hands worse than King high that I can bluff with. So I don't know how often he's actually check folding air. He, a lot of people just check with showdown value on this kind of flop. Even Ace X for two streets have seen it. Oh wow, that's just horrible, like checking jack high there for three streets. That's why we check king high, because sometimes people will make categorical mistakes and just check down three streets with jack high, that's just awful. 
like your range is not that weak that you have to check full jack high. Like, okay, flop and turn check through. Sure, you gave up those streets. Bet the river. You're like at the bottom of your range and you have value. You hit that queen very often with your checking range. Like, why are you not bluffing that river? You need to. It's really bad. Um, yeah, I mean, three bet here. That probably won't change this guy's range for getting in very much. I wouldn't think when you're down to 245, I don't really think you care about the action before you much. So we'll just go ahead and three bet it. And um, we'll hit set out now and wrap up this session because we've been playing for a while. Hopefully you enjoyed the the running commentary of the thought processor. Certainly enjoyed this session, thought it was pretty fun. Some interesting cool spots, no huge pots or anything, but that's not what makes poker interesting. It's the strategy, right? Same here, like you've got king high, um, you probably need to call this flop. Um, won't turn this into a bluff again just to keep my frequencies a bit more in check. I'm just going to go to showdown. I'm going to bluff now though because on the 10 I've picked up enough showdown value that I think king, bad king highs can now be can now be bets. He hits the 10 so he's not falling there but he'll fold like king something that doesn't hit the 10 or whatever. So um, Check 008. I don't like it when someone called chick raises me because I don't know man I'm afraid of girls. They always have the nuts. No offence if you're a girl. It's good to always have the nuts, right? It's a compliment. Um, I'm going to just call, obviously, because they can be raising like worse pocket pairs here, so I'm not going to go into the being terrified camp quite yet, especially on this turn where um, combos of sets are reduced. I'm going to call again. I'm going to check and cry river if they bet again, but that's fine. They don't, so we can just win. I mean, if we know that villain's raising mostly just over pairs there, we can like three bet the flop and try and get our money in, or a7 with a flush draw. That's kind of normal, I suppose. But I don't mind the way I play the hand. I'm kind of afraid of like being power men raised on the flop by fish. Like it's just not nice. Power men raised means like men raised plus a little bit. By the way, um, clear three bet here against the enemy, the Celtic FC, which is the other football team in Scotland that's not the one I support. In case you didn't guess that, and let's just see about this flop. Kind of smallish. Look to get some fold equity. Get called. Realize some equity. It's all good and get raised and just have to fold king high with those stacks. There's not really much we can do unless we know villain's crazy, in which case we can make an exploitative bluff shove with two overcards, but can't really do that. Just don't have the info. I don't know if I've hit set out there, no, I've not. So yeah, please do hit me up in the thread. Like if you're watching this and you don't understand something I've said, go back and listen again a few times. But if you still don't get it or you disagree and want to ask some questions, then you should just like leave me a comment and I will get back to you on the thread. Like it's no worries. And like I said, yeah, get in touch at admin at carrotcorner.com if you want to contact me privately for coaching or anything else, suggestions for videos, whatever. I'm always open for people to get in touch with me. It's always good to hear from you guys. And that's the end of our session. So thanks for watching. I'll do a few more like hand history review, live format kind of videos to wrap off this Zoom series and then I'll move on to other things. But hopefully gonna be exciting and entertaining. So see you guys on the forums. Thanks for watching.